I often have people reach out to me who are looking to make the jump into the world of medium format from 35, but are confused if something like 645 is actually even worth it, or if they should just jump straight to 67 based off of things that they've read on the internet. So this is always a fun topic and one that definitely brings with it a wide variety of opinions. So what I wanna to do today in this video is just talk about why I think 645 is not only worth the jump, but it's also one of the best 120 formats to work with, especially if you're just starting out. So if you're new to the world of medium format, or maybe you're just curious about it, hopefully this video helps answer some questions that you had. And if you're an experienced photographer, maybe you can just let us know your preferences below and any information you think that could help someone else out. But before we jump into things, I just wanna say that you know there really are no bad formats. So 35, 645, 66, 67, four by five, whatever it is, they're all very capable formats and it's really just gonna come down to personal preference and the type of work that you create. So if the format you're working with right now suits you and is working for you, don't feel like you need to upgrade just for the sake of it. Okay, so let's jump into it and talk about some of the reasons why I think 645 is a really great step up from 35 if you're interested in shooting medium format. And we're gonna start with looking at a comparison of the negative sizes. So as you start working with a larger negative, you get benefits like finer details, less apparent grain at similar image sizes and smoother tones. And if we look at a 35 millimeter frame and 645 frame side by side, even just visually right away, you'll see that there's quite a difference in size. The exact measurements are 24 by 36 millimeter for 35 millimeter film compared to 56 by 42 millimeter for 645, which means that 645 is a little over two and a half times larger than 35 millimeter, which in my opinion is quite a step up. So when it comes to 645 for people who are new to the world of 120, I personally think it's the perfect entry and there's a couple of reasons for that. But the first one is just the amount of images you get. So depending on the camera you use, you're gonna get 15 or 16 images per roll. And obviously that's not a huge jump up, say three to four images more than a six by six camera, but it does matter, especially with the current cost of film. And you know, for me, I've found that 16 images per roll is almost the perfect balance and it still gives me some of that kind of freedom I feel when I'm shooting with 35 and I'm not worried about counting every single frame. So the next thing is the aspect ratio and 645 has a four by three aspect ratio. And this is personally one of my favorites and it's not too much narrower than a frame of 35. So when it comes to composition, there's not that much of an adjustment period. But you know, on the other hand, something like four by five or six, seven, which is my favorite and they're pretty much the same. They're quite a bit narrower than 35. So if you jumped straight into that, there is an adjustment period when it comes to things like composition or lens selection. So it's not really a huge deal, but it is just something to keep in mind if you wanna make the jump and skip 645 and go to something like 67. So the third thing are camera choices and obviously there's a ton of amazing options out there for all the different format sizes, but I will say 645 seems to have the most kind of compact and lightweight cameras out there. And they also are gonna have a number of ones available that are similar to more traditional 35 millimeter cameras when it comes to ergos and how they operate. Something like the original Pentax 645 is an amazing option. It operates very much like a traditional 35 mil SLR, and it's also somewhat budget friendly. Then you have some amazing compact options like the Bronica RF645 or the Fuji GS645. And then the last thing is just talking about scanning at home. And we're gonna jump on the computer and look at a couple examples, but you know, I've said it before on this channel a number of times that I've never been happy scanning 35 millimeter film on a flatbed scanner, which is what a lot of people use, especially when they're first starting out. I've always found that it just struggles with the smaller negative and it's hard to really get an image with nice detail in it. But you know, when I used to scan with an Epson flatbed, working with 645, I was always pretty happy with the results that I got. And for me, that's a huge benefit being able to pull a nice scan from 645 at home. So let's jump on the computer. We're gonna look at a couple image examples and just talk about a few more things. Okay, so I got some images here from my collection. I scanned them on the CoolScan 9000, which is obviously a high-end scanner and it does really well with 35, but I just wanted to do 645 and 35 on this to show you the differences and what I think are some of 
the advantages. And you know, obviously these are different frames. They're not matching frames because I didn't shoot them for this test, uh, but they're all similar light. They're shot on Portra 400 and they're both with high-end lenses as well. So they should work just fine for this, but let's jump into the first one here. We're gonna look at, we're gonna jump back and forth actually, but this first one is 645. So a couple things I wanna talk about. We'll just zoom in to start to 100% and you can see what this looks like. And, you know, in my opinion, the detail that was resolved from the scanner with this larger negative just looks incredible. You know, if you look in the back of the truck here or on the bricks, all this kind of texture just does a really nice job. I'm super happy with how this scanner works with 645. Um, I think it does a really, really nice job. Uh, and, but then if we look at the resolution here, so this is giving us a th like a 6400 by 8500 pixel long image, which is a massive file size and would give you kind of a lot of flexibility when it comes to printing. You wouldn't be that limited with this. And I've personally printed uh, some 645 images scanned on the cool scan uh, up to almost 30 inches wide. I've been really happy with it. That's going to all be personal preference, but uh, I find these files super flexible and they give you a lot of detail. You know, obviously if you're scanning with a flatbed, the differences are going to be even more apparent from 35 to 645. But I just wanted to show you the differences using this scanner because I still think it'll get the point across pretty well. Uh, so we'll jump to 35 next. We'll jump down here. Uh, so you'll see the resolution now. We're getting a fit around a 5,500 pixel by 3,600 pixel image, which is still really nice. These are all scanned at 4,000 DPI on the cool scan. So these are the largest image sizes you can get out of that scanner. Uh, so quite a jump up, you know, uh, from 35 to 645. So around 5,500 pixels long to around 8,500 pixels long. So quite a difference. And then also if we zoom in here to 100% on this image, uh, you'll see that it still looks, it looks really good and I'm happy with how the cool scan works with 35, very much so. But you'll see it just does not look as good when it comes to that fine detail as that medium format frame. So still looks really good, uh, but there is quite a drastic difference in my opinion between the two formats uh, using this scanner. So we'll look at a couple more here. So again, this is 645. If we zoom into 100%, you'll see just does an amazing job. There's just so much detail here in the foreground. Hopefully this comes across on YouTube. I know compression kills this stuff at times, um, but it just, you know, it looks great. I've been really happy with these files. Ignore all the crazy amounts of dust. I didn't run uh, dust removal on this for this test. I just figured it was kind of pointless and it would save me some time. Uh, jump into a couple more here. So this is 645 again, going to 100%. You'll see the detail on the back of this car is just amazing. If we look here, you can even see like the, you know, the instruments here on the inside of the car. And then just all this fine detail down here in the grass is incredible. And like I said, using a flatbed scanning 645, obviously it's not gonna look as good as this on the cool scan, but you still can get some pretty nice scans, especially if you have a sharpening method down afterwards that uh, helps bring out some of that detail. But then we'll jump to 35 again. So we're around a similar resolution with the last 35 millimeter frame. I will go into 100%. So again, it still looks pretty good, but you'll see the detail uh, just is not as nice as on the 645 frame. Still looks good, but uh, yeah, still a pretty big difference. Uh, okay, then we'll look at one more 645 here. You know, this is gonna get a little repetitive. You're gonna notice very much, you know, the same similarities between all. Really nice detail resolved here. You know, it looks really nice up here in the sign. And then we'll jump to the 35 mil frame here. This is one of my favorites. Uh, like I said, again, looks nice, but you can notice a pretty big difference, especially down here. You know, you got a lot of fine detail uh, by the bumper of this car here with the grass. And it's looking good, but there's really only so much you're gonna be able to pull from that smaller negative. Uh, but with that being said, you know, this is a 5,500 pixel wide image. So this is still a very, very capable image file. You know, if you're doing say, prints under 20 inches long, uh, or if you are doing a photo book or something, this is gonna still give you a lot of flexibility uh, for printing. But like we saw with these files, if you wanted to, you know, jump up, you know, the, the, the jump from 5,500 pixels to 85 is going to give you a lot more flexibility and a lot more options when it comes to printing. 
Uh, so that's the thing is like, depending on what you wanna do, this is where it's gonna come down to kind of personal preference. But you know, for me, when I hear at times people say that 645 isn't really worth the jump up from 35 millimeter, I think that's absolutely crazy because the difference is actually quite drastic in my opinion, as I hope you can kind of see from these examples here. Okay, so I hope that helped answer some questions if you're curious about making the jump to 645. And I personally think it's an amazing format, so I would definitely recommend it for all of the reasons we just talked about. And also below, I'm gonna leave some links to some camera recommendations. You know, if you're curious about trying this out, ones that are good quality, but still somewhat affordable. So check that out below if you'd like. But other than that, just wanna say thank you for watching, for all the support, all the comments, and I'll talk to you soon.